All right, coming to you live from Blowjob Headquarters. This is My Drunk Uncle's Podcast with Bobby Flacco and Uncle Laser. Yes, Gildo! Now, uh, old McDonald had a fun. Rolling in my sweet baby's arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Welcome back to another episode of My Drunk Uncle's Podcast. Uh, what a day. Rainy day down here in Austin. South by was trash, but it's over with, and we cannot be happier. Yeah. On today's episode, we have a good friend of mine, been a long, long time friend for a long time now. Might want to pull the mic up to your mouth now and uh, cool. tell the people about it. This is a good friend of mine, Ellis Ballard, uh, a sensational country western singer. Uh, probably the best in Austin, some would say. Let's talk about it. Well, yeah, man. Um, we've been uh, at it for a while. I've been at it for a while. Uh, fucking failing forward for like the past like 10 years and just now really came into my own in the last couple. Hang on. Gary, what's going on? Just keep that mic a fist from your mouth. A fist? About right. a fist away. Right there? Yeah. yeah, that's good. All right, sorry. We're very unprofessional here, if you haven't already noticed. Should we spark up that marijuana? Yeah. Yeah, so now we'll get official. A little, uh, what's that, uh, that B that little, that little snack, little Scooby snack, little Scooby snack. So, uh, Landon, how far we go back? It's the days of uh, Texas State, college days. You walked in on me, butt-ass naked playing harmonica in the basement of the frat house. Yeah, man, uh, I wasn't really anticipating that. Uh, well, I don't think any, I don't even think I even knew where the fuck I was, to be honest. What was I, <laughs> you know, rolling? your cousin Riho. Yeah, jo- Joseph Rio. Yeah, your cousin yeah. Rio is our fraternity brother, and um, he was always a good time, Charlie. And uh, one day I finished failing uh, all of my finals, and I walked down to the house like the loser I was. And uh, I just heard, like, this fucking killer-ass fucking band playing, and it was, like, the Drugstore Gypsies Light Plus Laser. Yeah. And so, like, uh, this dude just wailing. has, like, a fucking, like, Rambo strap of, like, Harmonica's down his fucking chest. I look like the blues got, traveler. Yeah. yeah. You look like Except Johnny, skinny. You look like I, actually, I was fat as fuck back then. That was yeah. when I was going to the Chris Farley phase where I had the, the big beard. I looked like a fat magician. Yeah, so you look just like Johnny Popper except way shorter. Way shorter, dude. With blonde hair. Dude, I'm so glad you dressed up like the... my lesbian sister today, too. I can't talk about <laughs> well, it, dude. I, I, thought, fucking, you were, I, I thought you were going to skip right past the fucking No, picture. you better believe that's the fucking highlight of the show, yeah, dude. Yeah, look at you with your fucking mismatching inside-out sock, you idiot. Dude, all my clothes are dirty. We don't have any hot water in my house. Oh, my God. I feel so sorry for you, dude. Go wash it in the fucking rain at the creek. Oh, or right. Something, yeah, I'll, you take little, I'll take a little bit of that. Uh, I'm not a reptile, Bobby. I'm a lizard. Uh, <laughs> I come from the middle of the earth. I'm here to take over. <laughs> well, uh, a, a, a chick, at the, a chick at the, another, the other night at the Creek of the Cave called me Uncle Lizard, and it was the funniest comeback I've ever heard. I said, dude, you should be on my podcast because my co host sucks at roast me. Just makes oh, really? I've never work. called you that a million times already. Along with what is that, a else, snow bunny on your shirt? You show never listened to me. Got. Was that a little chihuahua? Oh, it's a seal. It's an elephant seal. It's got some blood spatter <laughs> Clubbing on Clubbing the, the baby too. seal. We've been clubbing the shit out of it, huh? <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I just ate a Dude, fucking... That's what you used to call getting trimmed back in the day. When you are getting laid, you are clubbing the baby seal. Clubbing the baby yeah. seal. Because <laughs> <laughs> that bald... <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, so, uh, fuck, Landon, let's talk about it here. Dude, your transformation, uh, like I said, I've known you since I was like 19, 20. And, uh, dude, I remember, I mean, dude, I still remember the days when you went by your first name and you were playing goddamn uh, on the back of a fucking trailer hitch at the at the, at the the tailgate playing goddamn wagon wheel and shit. I remember those good old shit, days. You remember boys. those days? I mean, yeah, they weren't good for me. but <laughs> They weren't good for any of us. We didn't know you what we were doing. You have to do that, though, bro. <laughs> no, you got yeah, yeah, to learn somewhere, somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But one day I remember just like, because I didn't know you played guitar, and all of a sudden you just showed up, and you're like, I'm going to be a goddamn country musician star. And then you were playing Wagon Wheel and Strawberry Wine and all them cool hot numbers. You shit till you reach the gold, man. That's just how it goes in this game. That's I, eat, name. I eat shit. I don't shovel <laughs> shit. I eat shit. I bomb shit on stage. Sandwich. I'm terrible. I was re-watching some of my clips from Houston the other day, and I'm like, I can tell when I'm on cocaine, even if I don't know I'm on cocaine. Like, yeah. It is bad. So can everybody who watches fucking Kill Tony. Dude. <laughs> well, okay. Since okay. your last episode. Hey, well, I'm banned, dude. I'm banned. <laughs> well, <Okay>. ouch. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Well, well, yeah. yeah, man. Co- cocaine's just bad for you timing, just, period. <coughs> like, I feel good. Anything that you're doing with, like, I mean, it's, it's tough. <coughs> that works, too. You've got to, uh, you've got to really be on your shit to be able to, like, be, Perform at that like that? Yeah, man. It's so tough, dude. <coughs> I just I, I'm one of those that just likes to live that rock and roll lifestyle. I'm just starting to learn that's not a that's not a conducive way to do a product. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel great on stage. I think I'm going great, but that's not what's happening. Yeah, I, I, I like on my s- s- sober sets. I'm like, all right, that's tight. 
<laughs> but when I watch the cocaine ones, I'm like, God damn, is this what people are seeing, dude? It's a bad product to put out. So. I'll see videos. <laughs> all that shit is, out. all that fucking shit does is inflate your ego, which is not something that you need. That's not what I need. Because when you think you're being funny and you're like, oh, dude, I know what I'm doing. I got this. I, all, all the other people that are watching are just like, oh, my God. Dude, train wreck. Like, yeah, train, train wreck. wreck. You don't and I'm going to be honest. Like I think I know what I'm doing, but I'm going to be honest with you right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm scared to death. Hey, well, hey there, there you go, dude. It all starts with that. Acceptance. We learned that in the 12-step program. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, seriously, dude, you have to be resilient to all the fucking no and the hatred whenever you're going to fucking come up in this because it's going to be there all yeah, the time. Right. Haters going to hate. Gonna hate. But, but, talking about hating somebody, Gary Faust, <laughs> how are you today? <laughs> yeah, see, so you got your shirt on. We're doing. You look like... Uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory's grandfather, the one that laid in that Dude, bed. Don't, don't talk to me. Oh, God. Just No, just go back to the guest. I'm yeah. sorry I was late, Gary. Don't talk to me, dude. You've been late my whole life, Gary. We've got about, what, three more minutes to do All for right, this dude. podcast? Well, just make sure it's just focused on your face. Um, <laughs> All right, so t- let's, let's, let's do the origin. I know dude, we met. I feel like I'm met. at dinner and mom and dad are fighting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, me and Gary, she, he hasn't given me a blowjob since 97. You know what I'm saying? We got married when sex stopped everything. We got everything. things to talk about. <laughs> but uh, let's get back into it here. Um, <coughs> so we met at the frat party. I'm down there in the basement. Uh, smoking meth and playing harmonica, and uh, <laughs> me and Joe, lying. no, literally, me and Joe, lying. me and Joe Rio, Rio were fucking smoking out of a light bulb uh, down there. You got to, sh- you put salt crystals in the in the light bulb, and shake the film out, get all that film and nasty white shit out, pour it out, and light it up, take it to the top, basing with the boys. Take it to the top. You know, people want to talk shit, but my man here is a fucking chemist, all right? Yeah, like, yeah, yep. he's I'm an alchemist. I'm an alchemist. Uh, I fucked an alchemist once. I've seen it here over there. It was plant life, but. uh Let's get back to it. So, like, when did it, uh, because, I mean, I remember watching you, and, you, you know, got like Bobby was saying, you got to shovel shit for you eat gold, and I see you start kind of tracking up and getting out more, and then all of a sudden, you're full-on 1950s goddamn country western swing. When did that kind of snap? Was that what you were going for, or did you just kind of fall in line to that? I've always had it in my <coughs> pocket. It was something that I was, like, raised on, and I really enjoyed listening to, like, I was I was trying to pop in that Texas country scene, and I didn't sound anything like those dudes. And I was like, always good enough to get work, but I wasn't good enough or like to different enough to set that myself next level apart. Part. Yeah. Hey, brother, make sure you're talking into the, directly into that mic. And so uh, I would go and like sit down in these guitar circles, these song swaps and stuff, and like you know, folks that are known in those circles and stuff. I would play like my country western tunes or my old country stuff, and they would like. <coughs> Kind of like talk down at it or something like that. And eventually I was like, man, fuck y'all and fuck this scene. I'm going to do, make music that I like to listen to. And I'm going to go give it one more stab. Because I'm, it was like, you know, self-funded and like uh, fucking, the first 10 minutes of uh, Happy Gilmore is like my life. You know, I was like, yeah. I was a gas attendant. I yeah. was a fucking construction worker. Like you do whatever the fuck it takes to, to make it by. fucking work. You know what I mean? And, uh. Eventually, um, man, the pandemic happened, and it was a time for, like, a good reset. And I went and sat down with the uh, senior creative director at BMI, Mitch Ballard. Shout out to Mitch. Shout out Mitch, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Hey. And, uh, yeah, man, Mitch heard some of my songs, and I told him, you know, I was looking to, to do something different this time around, and I wanted to, to learn as much as I can about the industry and everything about it. And uh, Mitch was, was real supportive and uh, helped me kind of put my ducks in a row and get this stuff really started. And, um, yeah, man, that's kind of like when Ellis Bullard came about. Was, yeah, rest uh, in peace, Mitch. <laughs> he's still with no, us. No, he's still with us. Before we go any further, Bobby, uh, will you put some of this beard oil on? This is my new beard. beard. I, I know you can't grow a beard that well, but it actually helps if for people without with struggling beard and facial apparel. Does it? Uh, it There's smells delicious. Uh, this right here, uh, the Uncle Laser beard and mullet <laughs> I just break snake out. oil. We also have a pomade that's going to be Mother's Milk, the Rattlesnake Mother's Milk. Uh, they'll be available on the website here shortly. We, we, we don't have a sponsor yet, so we're sponsoring ourselves. So when you said uh, self-funded, I know what that's like. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm That's saying? what all these little hole-in-the-wall Mexican restaurants do whenever they're laundering money. They're sponsoring themselves. They're sponsoring the themselves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's brilliant, honestly. Hey. I mean, dude, the last time I had to go out and actually get a sponsor when I, was when our fucking Little League baseball team needed goddamn uniforms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I went to the Quickie Mart in Frito-Lay where my mom worked, and they sponsored our, our uniforms. Nice. And they were made of, like, cotton 
Not even they felt bad for the little fucking yeah, yeah, the little ninos. Yeah, the little ninos. Hey, no, but <coughs> hey. So one thing I noticed that sticks out about you, because as a fucking fellow musician out here, and knowing you, I mean, I've known you since Texas State too. Me and him we'll, stayed in the same fucking dorm. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can revi- we'll revisit that in a little bit. But I wanted to give you credit because I just see your work ethic as much as like anything, bro. The one of the biggest parts to getting booked out here and. <laughs> And overcoming these people who are trying to fucking look past you and play favorites with their fucking already existing artists who they have signed. Like, you have to be able to take no one, but two, you have to be able to fucking get yourself booked and kind of do your own management. You know what I mean? Talk about self-sponsor. You got to self-manage for, I mean, as long as possible until you fucking undergo... You know, yeah, uh, you got to build up your business, man. Like your shit's got to be popping enough to where like a bigger entity that you really want to fuck with, like eventually like CAA or something like that. It's like, yo, that kid's making money. I want some of that. Yeah. Like if we like that kid's doing a million a year right now, if we got with them, we could do three, three and let me get a piece of that pie. Right. Once, once you can bake your own pie, people come a calling for it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Man, it just takes a minute to get that shit going, you know, and That's like, it. a lot of people don't stick it out. You know, a lot of people, you know. Uh, sometimes it, it doesn't always like happen for them or whatever, but, um, you know, you just got to keep on fucking, uh, keep on carrying the water and chopping the wood. And eventually somebody, you know, will take notice of like, like you said, work ethic, man. Like I've been told no so many fucking times and been laughed at by so many fucking people in my like circle, I guess, or like in that, in that lane that were like, I was like, all right, fuck y'all watch this shit. I'm going to work my fucking ass off, and then it's going to be like, you're going to want to ask to come work with me. Yeah. You just got to, with the no shit, though, like, you just got to build a callus and don't let it get you down. You know what I'm saying? You just got to keep on keeping it. It's no for now, dude. It's no for now. It's not no forever. You know, you figure it the fuck out. But I see, because like I said, man, before you had your residency shit all throughout Austin and stuff and was really, you know, getting your fucking, finding your fucking pocket, like... We were Dude, you were all over the place, like just anywhere that would say fucking yes. And I got to credit to you that for the testament of that, because man, that's that's goddamn drive and hustle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Well, you got to get out there and do it. There's no way about it. It's just like if you're gonna be a fucking comedian or you're gonna be a fucking musician or you're gonna be whatever, dude. You got to be all the way the fucking. That means giving up. You know, going out with your friends. That means like missing weddings, missing funerals, missing birthdays. It's all that shit. And eventually, that shit's all boring, anyways. Yeah, that shit's fucking. Lame. But this did, is the best excuse how, to miss all that lame shit. How, 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 but how does one also too have like a? Because you know, you know, girls still together, I believe. Yeah, right? and y'all been together about three, four years, ain't it? Like, yeah, about four, or five. To my well, shit, that. fuck me to tears. I mean, so you know, it's it, like to even that because I mean, life. You know, it's that's it's unorthodox, especially from that girl. Probably ain't from that music background like that, huh? No, well, her her dad fucking loves classic country music. Like, okay. He's got a fucking, like, vinyl vault that's got, like, fucking certified vinyl deep cuts. Like, he's got it all, man. He fucking loves it. So she was raised on the same shit that I love to make, and it's always cool to go hang out over at his spot. So it's like... And kick it with... Yeah, it does always going to be on the You know, like, the, yeah. the, 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 my girl's parents are fucking awesome, and they're super supportive, too. Like, you know, they understand... You Loaded? Know, what, no, I mean, dude, they work hard. He's a hardworking man, you know. It's, oh, yeah. he's, he's blue collar and you know works hard for everything he's got. And his mo- her mom works too, you know, which is like, you know, you got a two family household where both people work and shit like that. You know, it's, it's, she comes from a good background. Yeah, fuck yeah. But uh, no, I was talking like more about just the actual you being gone. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, having that and sucks. having to be all you got to learn how to. You got to learn how to love long distance. Well, you and know to what balance I'm balance that shit. And also, whenever you're out there, like yeah, you're having a good time. You're cutting up with your boys and stuff. But like, like you said, that longevity shit. Like if you're going out on the road for fucking like you know two or three weeks at a time, and you go out in the first fucking like week, you're drinking and doing drugs every night of the fucking week. Week two and three fucking suck. Yep. It's so goddamn hard to get through that. So, like, you fucking, you know, you learn how to take care of yourself and, like, uh, you know, just manage shit. Uh, you know, you, it's just all shit that comes with time, you know, and, like, some people get it and some people don't, you know, and, like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't shy away from a good time, but, like, you got to know when to button up and know when it's time to, like, handle business at the same time. Okay. So, like. It's but a good balance. Let's, let's, uh, I mean, we got to, you know, kind of get the ins and outs, get started. Let's get rolling because your boy's getting hot. Let's let's talk about the interesting shit that happens out on the road now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever been out there playing and you playing them fucking shit old country dive bars? You ever just see some fucking fights just break out in the middle of the fucking dance floor while you're playing and shit? People just beating the dog shit out of one another or what? 
Dude, we saw somebody get a fucking pool cue wrapped around him over at uh, Shades in uh, Bay City one night. It was a couple years back, though. It wasn't any time recent. I don't think I played there in quite a bit, but... Yeah, there was like a fight right by the fucking. What did you uh, say, Bay City? Bay City, where I'm from. Be careful, Texas, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't BC, no shot. BC, baby. Just Shout the out. Pool cue, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it was. Uh, it was Country pretty night nuts. at the pool hall. Yeah, man. Well, any of those shithole fucking patch towns or factory towns, you know, you're gonna have like. Um, that just, trash that is some oh, of that trash that riffraff that comes through. Yeah, man. It's like you know the kids that are like you know. 19 to like 23 or something and worked right out of high school and fucking like i mean i don't know i'm not trying to like you know there's some probably some kids that aren't like that <laughs> play some they, they, pussy. They, they, yeah <laughs> they get to fucking no not even that if they said that that'd be awesome but it's like fucking play some morgan wall and uh, like, play, play some like bro country shit and like you know i'm not into that bro and like that's not my get up so like why even fucking start but, uh, yeah, man, you get tried a lot by a lot of motherfuckers. A lot of people really want to, like, see if, like, the uh, the guy in the boots and the 10-gallon hat's fucking ready to yeah, If he's ready to, to fuck his, If he remembers <laughs> yeah. what it was like, or is this yeah. all just a sh- look? You know what I'm saying? The answer is yes, dude. Yeah. We are. <laughs> we just oh. got done training at the 10th Planet. Just son. take a little boxy class. Dude, dude, boxeo, dude, that shit's straight cardio. I was dying. Gary, I don't know how you did that in your heart condition. Uh, I think that might have been one of the factors that led up to me. Yeah? Having a mild heart attack. Yeah, and dude, uh, yeah, I appreciate what? you letting me borrow your hand wraps and the boxing gloves, but those fucking shoes last night you told me were ten and a half. They were thirteens. <laughs> so you I, got, I, you got I, small feet. I really look like a so fucking, like cla- fucking clown, clown shoe. Clown. Yeah, I like Bozo. I look Bozo the clown taking a fucking boxing class. I was looking class. at his fucking feet the entire class, and I was like. Man, I wonder what size those are, bro. <laughs> dude, this motherfucker got wonder, flippers. This dude, is a swimming look, class, dude. I look like a fucking penguin, Danny DeVito's they penguin. Yeah, they like might have been elevens. No, they were not elevens. They were thirteens, buddy. I wear a ten and a half, and this fit me. Well, they were twelves actually. I lied to make the story cooler, but they were twelves, one hundred percent. Well, nonetheless. Um, also, too, for some of y'all uh, that don't really know Landon that well or follow him, like, dude, it, it ain't just the the music and the voice that you're writing and you're playing, dude. You got the you got the look with it as well. I mean, just fuck, stand up, show him that belt, get a little fit check on him. Right? I mean, look at these pants; those are goddamn Western wear special right fucking, there. That's that. Fucking I mean, half quill fucking goose pimples. That's right there. That's awesome, <laughs> baby. That's that yeah. fucking ostrich. That's that, that fucking ostrich blanco. That would look uh, good with them boots you got me. Yeah. Oh, that oh that would slap the with one. them boots. Yeah. Go. That's a little wider. One's got your little vanilla. But yeah, no, that's good. But no, like I said, like Lane's band. I mean, dude, they're dressed to the nines and looking to fucking slay, buddy boy. I'll like tell you, from dude. the bass player to the motherfuck uh, you know, uh fucking uh what's the fucking the slide player's name? I can't remember Sam. His name. Sam. Sam. I always fucking forget his name. Oh, Count name. Wackula. Yeah. That dude's just a fucking so, but they're all dressed apart. Like even like it ain't just it ain't just oh they did that for the album cover shit. It's like no, these motherfuckers are walking around every gig, and every, every day. fucking after party. Like, like I mean, like I see you wear a little comfortable shit because you don't want to wear you know fucking boots sometimes. The same I way I need a boot deal. Oh, I'm not wearing any yep. more fucking boots till I get a fucking deal with somebody. Yeah. And it yeah, might be a little it, early baby. for that, but I would like some fucking boots, please. But, I mean, y'all are dressed in the nines all the time, and it really, it, like, when I go to a show and I see some motherfuckers playing some cool shit, like, you always have technicians and good people that play music and can play pretty much anything, but I always associate it feeling... Like, if I saw a motherfucker that had that look and could play like that, like, he ain't just playing it like I'm a technical game, but he loves this shit. You soul. know what I'm saying? That's soul. He's got that blend to his music, that soul. And I, I've always appreciated that. Like, if a motherfucker's talented, good, and it, like, looks the part, and what he's singing is, like, what he's trying to relay, I'm like, God damn, dude, all right. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're in. They're committed. The moment we stop dressing like the fucking roadies... And we stop like showing up, like looking like shit, like going to go play it at these shitholes, dude. We go make soft more. note at me. No, not even, dude. <laughs> not even, bro. Because it's different. It's different. Wait, hold on. You're, hold on. Hold on. You're on a fucking big stage. It's different. Hold like on, whatever man, you on. show up to fucking the ice house in fucking bumfuck Texas, and you're dressed like you just ran lights for fucking <laughs> like Pantera or something like. <laughs> Like, yeah. they treat you like shit, but you show up to somewhere like that, and I'm dressed to the fucking nines. Like, I look like I own the fucking place. Yeah, yeah. They don't know who the fuck I yeah, am. Yeah, you don't look like And they treat me with fucking t- respect, t- dude. <laughs> yeah, we would... You- you don't we look would like make another hour's guitar tape. <laughs> <laughs> we would make more money in tips than we would the, than the bars were guaranteeing. Oh, 100 percent. You know, we'd make yeah. like over a grand in tips. You know, and people be, appreciate that shit. Like, and speaking of the, the way you dress, like, dude, the other night when Bobby and them played, the nether hour was playing a goddamn uh, Hulkin <laughs> over there. 
Bobby could come out in the same sweatpants he got the same fucking three days in a row. And then not only that, he took the goddamn sweatpants off and he's wearing swim trunks under it. <laughs> and like, like the, but the netting's cut out, you know, like he cut out so his balls can die. I see the netting falling out of the side of the goddamn leg. I go, what's this boy doing? And he's a fucking star. So sometimes it has the adverse effect. You know, hey, that, that fucking homeless guy from under the bridge is, is a hell of a guitar player and singer, dude. Well, my, and my thing with that, because check it out, I you know, I mean, I'm in too similar of a fit, maybe changing shirts here or there, but we live on the streets for South by out here when you're really out oh, here yeah. cutting it up. I mean, at least in my case. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. y'all play Denver yeah. every night. Y'all but, play Denver every night. No, day. so like, fucking, dude, so I'm up there and I'm like, like I don't have the fit for the night that I, I would like to have, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to gradually take my fucking clothes off so i started with my <laughs> shoes and socks yeah. i take them bitches off first and then but everybody's like i think that's on brand for y'all's fucking party though dude y'all's vibe like y'all can literally do whatever the fuck y'all wanted on stage because but it, it's fun we're having fun you know it's rock and roll with us and we are it's fucking honky tonk so it, it does make sense to come buttoned up looking the fucking part in y'all's case and it goes a long way but yeah with us it's it's always been the fucking wild the, yeah. the wilderness of our show. It's a yeah, whole it's, it's ass primitive. experience, yeah, dude. You show primitive. up there it's and experience like, and shit. But, like, it's just like with the style, you know? If, but it yeah. fits y'all's vibe. And like Landon, y'all dressed to the nines, it, it's, it caters to that vibe of y'all. So, but it feels great to dress to the fucking Yeah, well, oh, I mean, feels well, no, good. I mean, yeah. But, but sometimes, yeah. but like by looking at them, like we go to the White Horse every Wednesday when y'all was out there playing. And like when y'all are in the pocket and I'm seeing like I, women stare at y'all, like, you know, they're looking at something like their daddy's listening to and they're, they're moister than a towel. Y'all boys are bulged <laughs> up. They're, they're, they're <laughs> moister. Y'all bulged up. Yeah, y'all are bulged up. I mean, like, you know, I mean, my boys, it look like they're packing cement in there. Goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Goddamn, boy, God, 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 hey, well, you stole my telescope. Hey, Give it back. Hey, Man, is that a banana or is that a banana? You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking, uh, yeah. So, but but then like at the same at the same time, and it varies to the type of woman. But in Austin, like that kind of country music, you would think wouldn't you know that'd be out where we're from. You know that'd be prevalent out there with a bunch of bar fly shit. But there's beautiful ass twenty five year old, thirty year old women that are out there dancing to this shit and yeah, dressed up to the nines. Well, here, I mean, dude. and they're not looking me wrong. There's some cougars down there, you know. There's some pumas. Some I mean, cougar wooga. You know, I mean, you got some willy mammoths down there. I had an old lady poke me in the butt with her cane the other day. You know what I'm saying? So they trying to get after it. I get it. I'll peel I like back it. A, I like I'll it. I'll peel back a scab and go to town. I don't give a shit. But, <laughs> but fucking, uh, what I'm saying is like, they, they got, there's women out there that are vibing that. And then you come to y'all show, and you got all these girls who don't shave their underarms and shit, and they're hanging out, and they're vibing, too. I mean, they're loving it, but it's a vibe. It's a catch a vibe anywhere you go. <laughs> so this, this female... I'm high as shows. fuck right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Good. I like it. This I'm is great. Fucking, you're not all this fucking, dude's fucking on one, You're dude. not all fucking heart attacks. Hey, so, so let me ask you this. Why did you pick honky-tonk music? Why are you attracted to it? I've the old school vibe. Hey, Gary. There's some kind of white thing on the camera right here. Like it broke or something. It's your hat. Oh, it's my hat. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, my fuck. God, dude. All right. Hey, so, yeah, but but uh, but uh, why why that? Why was why were you influenced so heavily by that? I've got I've got ties to it, man. My uh, my uh, my mom's side of the family's uh, from Alabama. My mother was a recording artist in, uh, like, the Muscle Soul scene and, like, toured and played music in a, a group called Punch. And um, also, like... My uh, cousin on my mom's side, Daryl Holden, uh, Barefoot Holden, he uh, played drums with Ronnie Millsap for a minute. And um, nice. my dad was in a uh, a bunch of bands and stuff when he was younger. And, like, whenever uh, he was older, whenever I was a little kid, they had, like, a plant group called the Western Express. It was all the people from yeah. STP. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd always play, like, all the dance halls all over everywhere, and I'd go see that shit. So I've always grown up. I grew up, you know, listening to Prine and uh, fucking... Anything, you know, you could name Atkins Prime, uh, you know, Alan Jackson, any of that. And um, it's always, like, been there for me. Like, I, I couldn't really identify with the shit whenever I was younger. So, like, uh, I was, like, listening to, like, fucking hate breed and shit whenever I was, like, in the fourth <laughs> and fifth grade. Oh, God damn. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, you know, you start going through it, you know, whenever you're, like, you know, becoming a man and shit, yeah, and you know. Then you're, like, you're, like, God yeah. damn, that motherfucker's spitting. Yeah. Like, yeah. So you, you yeah. make more sense. You can relate with your pops, too, right. as you get older, right. too, with the music. I think that's a big Coffee's bond between right. a father and son, you know what I'm saying? Well, a father and a Thea or Theo and whatever. Theo and Thea. Yeah. But, you know. But no, I, I get that. I get that, dude. I get that, dude. Yeah, no, it's fucking. Um, but it's I awesome. wanted to say because especially with the style of music you play, like, like you said, like when you're younger, you're not really into that shit, and as you get older, like, it, it's kind of a tight niche group of people that like that old classical kind of shit. So, like, 
tell me like the trials and tribulations with like having band members drop out and band members. I mean, cause is it hard to us? Is it hard? It's to like assemble? AAA baseball, man. Right. Some get called okay. up to the big leagues. Okay. And some okay. burn out and like some get a real job and. Because I mean, how many people? Because I mean, I've seen you with different. I mean, I've been knowing you a while, but yeah, when you really man. started, I've going, been at it for a fucking minute, dude. You like, really have. Facebook will remind me. I've been fucking a loser for a long time. Uh, with those memories, dude. Yeah, that oh thing god, hit you in the fucking heart. Oh, god, I'm not even on Facebook, <laughs> dude. But the, the disadvantage is that now I don't, I don't remember any of my friends' birthdays. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. That's, 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 I, Facebook was dude, the, that was my sole purpose dude, for a while. Dude, that was it. And, and 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 honestly, I won't even tell him happy birthday that day because it gets lost in all the other fucking status posts on him. I wait till the next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, happy birthday. I know it was, but read mine. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. No, nah, dude, I'm with that, dude. I like the, the belated hits a little harder. It does, because, hey, man, he was thinking about me. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, they already got all he's, that. He's still thinking about They're me. They're like, how could this birthday get any better? Boom. And then, you know. <laughs> you know? Happy birthday week. Happy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I hate when the girl's like, oh, it's my birthday month. Like, well, yeah, well, please getting, stop. Dude, you already got, you got crazy because, like. Yeah, dude, and I hate them. And then the, when they wear the fucking money on their, like, with the. Did you see the shit. picture in like, my dude. fucking story? Oh, yeah. No, I saw that guy. I walked past that guy at Southwest. Dude, those were real. Those were real $100 bills stapled to that motherfucker. For anybody who know what we're talking about. On Staple? Dude. He I'm over a, there playing, like, my 10th free show for the week. Yeah. <laughs> and this dude, guy's walking this, around. This, this, this black dude. Fucking... No bullshit. This black dude had a fucking ghillie suit on. But instead of it being green camo, it was all $100 bills stapled onto him. And they were real. Like, stapled to his skin? Sta- stapled to it. It's like a... It's, yeah, it this was dude like a, looked like, like a, a fucking... Ghillie suit. Like a camo heavy suit, uh, and it's cash cloth. money grimace, it, and you could fucking you could staple onto the cloth, and it was so it wasn't stapled to his skin. No, not to his skin. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Man. <laughs> I was picturing. I don't know if, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, like, okay. yeah, here, give me a dollar. He's oh, like, man. give me a dollar. You could staple it to me, and this, this is that's like, exactly oh. what I was picturing. Like you know, stapled to his head and shit. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was tight to be seen. Yeah, that was that was fucking nuts. Yeah, that shit was fucking. Hey, do you have yeah. a favorite uh, a favorite road gig right. that you can recall? Fuck yeah, man. We just sold out two shows in uh, Wisconsin and uh, up in north? the Dells. Yeah, Come we sold on. out two shows back to back at the Thursday and Friday night in uh, in the Dells, Wisconsin. And those those were fucking badass. Fuck yeah. We, uh, man, we've had some fucking crazy shit happen at these shows too lately. Like, we, uh, we played this private gig here, uh, like in the B Cave area. And uh, I pulled up, we pulled up like about two or three in the afternoon for sound check. It was like, corporate gig started around like six or seven or something and uh we pull in and there's like these people getting fucking hammered in the parking lot and i look a little closer as we're like pulling in and this dude's got like a fucking duster on and like they're like dressed like full-on like red dead redemption cosplay characters yeah and they're like one looks like a goddamn blacksmith this dude one like it looks crazy and they're like i noticed they're like getting really drunk and then, like, we pull in, and I'm thinking that they work for the company that we're playing for. And they're like, oh, okay, like, you know, we're about to play a country show for them. And they're all playing dress up, and, like, they're getting really drunk for their company party. That's crazy. But these people were hired actors. So Cole's walking in and doesn't know anything. And there's this dude that's, like, being fucking crazy and walking around and, like, shut the fuck up. Causing, this, dude, causing this crazy scene. And I'm thinking he's about to go to jail. <laughs> And he fucking bumps right into Cole, and Cole, like, looks at him, and I think Cole's about to fucking hit him or something. <laughs> or, like, like, what's the fuck's your problem, guy? And this fucking, like, cosplay sheriff comes up and, like, grabs him. And, like, hey, make sure start, you keep talking into that mic, though. They else. start fighting, and uh, it was, like, just, like, the craziest thing ever. And, like, right after that, we're like, fuck, man, like, it's not even sound check, and this is the craziest thing I've ever encountered. And we'd all, like... Just eating a little bit of mushrooms before. Oh, shit. So, so it's, even, shit. it's all we're, exacerbated. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're pulling in and we're just like, oh, weird vibes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, where are we at? <laughs> yeah, where the fuck are we at? Yeah, like, we, did, are we on the set of 1883 right now? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We, uh, dude, so we start smoking in the van and this chick walks up and she's like, gas yeah, smoke with y'all. She talks like that, like his real smoky voice. There's a lot of She's from Fredericksburg. Yeah. <laughs> I say chick. She's probably like in her late 30s or 40s. She knew better what she was doing. Right. But anyway, she starts smoking with us. And uh, we're actually not in the van. We're in fucking uh, Cole's car. And uh, she falls asleep. 
in Cole's car after hitting the blunt a few times. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. As y'all just smoking? In- yeah, just casually smoking before sound check. Like, we're just smoking. She's like, can I hit that? And we assume that, like, she has her oh, shit together. God. She's cool. Anyways, uh, she won't wake up. She won't get the fuck out of the car. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> lady, you gotta go. Like, yeah. Sam's like, uh, Cole's like, what the fuck? I get her out of here. I'm like, I don't even want to be here right now. So I'm leaving. I just like, walked away. I'm gonna leave it up to y'all. <laughs> y'all figure it out. <laughs> Dude, what had ha- what ended up happening was somebody came by and saw her. It was like, oh, that's so-and-so. You gotta go get her boyfriend. And you gotta go get him to come get her. <laughs> we're like, what the fuck? We're like, she didn't say anything about a boyfriend. So her boyfriend comes up, and it's how one of a, those Western how, cosplay how, how, characters. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's yeah. like, I've got to fucking work. He's like, I can't, I can't take care of this shit. And I'm like, bullshit, you don't. Like, hey, man, come get your you, shit. Yeah, dude. dude. Like, no, he's like, you're out here getting my old lady high. <laughs> And we're like, no, your old lady doesn't even mention you and then just asked us if she can fucking smoke. And we said, yeah, because it's not a big deal for adults. <laughs> but she fucking, man, it was the worst experience ever, dude. <laughs> and like, we're like, man, we're never letting that happen again. And fucking, uh, sure enough, man, we're in fucking Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> we're at the post 82. And uh, fucking this lady says that she drove in from Missouri. Her son's deployed and she really loves our shit. That's tight. Yeah, that's a good little. And that's a good feeling. Yeah, fuck She's yeah. got a huge marijuana leaf tattooed on her arm. So we're like, yo, we're about to go smoke before we play. You want to like, you know, smoke with us or whatever? And she's like, yeah, sure. That sounds cool. So we're like, talking cool. to Mike, baby. So we're like, cool. Hey, so, hold on, hold on real quick. Are you able to make phone calls live on the thing, on the pod? Is that a setup thing? I can. Because we, what we need phone, to do is yeah. we need to call fucking Leonardi until she ever touches them fucking mic stands with that goddamn pickle grip she's got, them canned pickle grips. Never again, dude. I'm, I'll, I'll push her downstairs, I swear to God. All right, look, I got it. <laughs> so we were in Nashville at the Post 82, and this lady uh, wanted to, you know, I just, we saw the weed leaf on her arm, and, you know, we figured she'd want to get high with the band before we uh, played, you know? And, um, Sure enough, dude, we fucking get out of the van and like we're all sound checking, getting ready, and uh, we like walk outside real quick, and uh, we notice that she's like asleep on a fucking bench <laughs> outside of the fucking place. And we're just like, man, people saw her fucking go get in the van, smoke with us, and then next thing you know, she's asleep on a picnic table, and we're just like, what are y'all? What's in y'all? What's weed? in our weed? Yeah. Dude? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it was really good stuff. It was from Oklahoma. Nice. Tulsa. Yeah, that Oklahoma weed's going she got, fucking in nowadays, baby. She's got high on that Tulsa heat. what happened. Yeah. I was going to ask you this, but I just realized, yeah, you've been with that girl for uh, for five, five or years. six years. Yeah, I so I, can't, I was going to ask you, like, yo, does pussy taste different when you're, like, east or west of the Mississippi <laughs> or higher up in the Rockies and that altitude <laughs> pussy? I just was curious because I know I've had a couple experiences that are like, yo, that, that, that that's not the same. Like oysters. Like, like Yeah, like, <laughs> you, smell like, you smell like the Gulf of Mexico. What's going oh, on? You know what I'm saying? No, I'm the same way how they have different oysters. From different yeah, yeah, yeah. Cold water oysters, you know, yeah. But yeah, it man, just, it just turns out old girl had a yeast infection, so that was all that was. <laughs> this was years ago. Dude, being a God-fearing Christian yeah. man. Well, you know. Yeast Yo, infection. I don't God, ride man. that bull if it don't buck back. Dude, you know where? <laughs> Smelled like a Weichel's bakery down yeah, there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was bad. What's Wireless. Larry? Larry, where do you where do you buy those outfits? Oh, that's custom, baby. Where do you get those? hundred percent. These? I'm the always jeans? the pants, the jackets, all that the shit. Jeans a Wrangler, right? You can find yeah. those at the fucking Wrangler. The, corral. the Wrangler Fender. Uh, y'all need to do a line with us. Y'all just did well, a collab. He's, he's, he's just it. using this. Hey, as that, a, boy, as a that boy knows how to sponsorship. Push. Push. That's good. That's no, good. Come get, do. come get this money, baby. Yeah, baby. Because uh, I, I know you got that jacket custom made. Yeah, I got a, a like a, a nudie suit per se. I got that done from the Texas Rhyme. What does that store. mean? What does that mean? Uh, nudie suit, man, that, that's a, like this gentleman back in the day. You can go look it up. And he was an immigrant uh, from like uh, Ukraine or Slovenia, something like that. Something crazy. Immigrants do the best work. Oh, the best, dude. Yeah. Always. But uh, they, um, he like started the nudie suit trend, like the fucking crazy rhinestone cowboy era shit. All one piece, uh, yeah, like, okay. pants okay. matching Super jacket. Dope. Yeah, because y'all are all from Texas and and know all this shit. But I didn't grow up with any of this at all. Hey, you're, you're, no you're country from, music, nothing. You're from Ohio, ain't it, Gary? Yeah, right up there. Yeah, but I, I, I had blues and shit up there, huh? Right, right. But no, like, yeah, no real. 
no funk and blues and rock and roll and all that shit. But not real country swing. Well, I started listening to a lot of country music and honky tonk shit when I moved to Austin like six, seven years ago. But I don't know any of the history of it at all. You yeah, ever been to Nashville? It's super dope. Dude. I used to. I lived there for like six months. That was that was the first place I lived it. that I started listening to country music. And because when I was growing up, my dad was always like. My dad's from the from inner city Syracuse, New York. So he grew up listening to like the Who and Led Zeppelin and shit. And he was always like, he was like, yeah, country music's for fucking losers. Like, fuck those pussies. <laughs> which is which is crazy because now like that's some of my favorite music. Yeah. But but I just I don't know any of the history of any of this shit. I don't even know what nudie suit means. Yeah. Yeah. Like what yeah. where does where does that even come from? That was like uh, I think that was like the name of his either the name of his company. You can uh, it's there's so this fella if you want to deep dive and just like a hard nose introductory into country music and the entire bit of it, check out the uh, Cocaine and Rhinestones podcast uh, by Tyler May and Co. That's uh, David Allen Coe's son. Oh and he's, shit! He got yeah he got into the Country Hall of Fame with his podcast. It's a fucking oh no shit great series uh, top to bottom man. It'll start you literally at the genesis of country music all the way through the uh, the golden era, the A Team Nashville days, like all of it, and it'll give you the ins and outs, the fucking uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all, man. And uh, it's a fucking you'll you'll get a lot from that. Who are your top three influences? Died on dot no. Nah, real shit. Uh, I would probably say, um, man, George Jones, uh, Jerry Reed, yeah, and uh, man, maybe Roger Miller. Those George, those are George Jones, the Possum, formerly known as the Possum. Those are great. Those are great. Yeah, yeah you know why it's great. called the possum. Uh-huh. You hear it, it resonates, but you you got your own shit to you too, just from being yeah, where yeah, you're from. Sure. And, and dude, and your band is amazing. You know, what I mean, I love it. Yeah, you got I'm, some I'm, of the I'm best always there too. coming to watch. But what I was gonna circle back to from earlier because I've known you for fucking over ten years now. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, dude. I we mean, 2009 shit. we met. When you think about it. Damn, that's, sure, that's fucking like 14 years. Yeah, We're dude. old, Bobby. I'm a, yeah. You're aging like a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. I'm uh. going backwards, baby. <coughs> but yeah, no, I, dude, yeah, we met at Texas State. We were in the same dorm over at uh, the Tower. Tower Hall, yeah, dude. I used to get oh, drunk. Oh, shit. I used to get the drunk. Tower, dude, I forgot. Yeah, that dude, dude, fucking building. The history we dude. have is very musical I, as well. Like, yeah. that music is what kind of brought, I mean, that's We would sit brought. outside wait, the tower? Wait, wait, wait. Alex West. Stayed in the tower in 2009. Who? Yeah. Alex yeah. West. Yeah. Uh, Alex East, you mean? Yeah, dude. So that's crazy because, and that's where he met Joe. Yeah. That's where me had Joe, he met Joe and, and, and them. That's how they hooked up. That's how I hooked up with them. Damn, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, that's dude. That's crazy. Wild. Full circle. How do we not fucking see each other ever, dude? Because probably because I was like, I had to withdraw like with, <laughs> before a month into school. I probably like, I should have. Him. <laughs> and I, I did. I mean, I was losing my mind all, all serious. I had to literally go, you know what I mean? I got checked into a place. Then I had to go to fucking rehab. Did any of y'all graduate? I yeah. did, yeah, yeah. We you did? did? I think same Both year, of y'all? Right? 2014? Yeah. 15. 15. Ha, ha, I beat you. So we're all college graduates. Yeah. I made more money than all y'all. Yeah, dude. I was literally watching him <laughs> make more money hey, than me. Why do you owe me money then? I hate Pay it. me if it's you got so much money. You get those clips out on time. Pay anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you told me I had three clips. I had one this Mom morning. Dad this are this whole again. podcast, I'm cutting the camera to me. Hey, the so entire let, uh, time. Let's, let's get on that real quick. So the one that just released before this one, it's just me and the boys and uh, Bobby Bo- Bobby Flacco's grandpa. And it's just us hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Can't pan up that. Wait, 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 yeah, I brought this talisman. It's, it's Bobby Flacco's Ambula. Is that how you say it? Abuelo, bro. Abuelo, Ambula. Abuelo. Abuelito. Abuelito. This motherfucker. Abuela, <laughs> uh, But no, but when Gary went back, I, so Gary, he does the editing and shit, and I come over and I watch this stuff before we post it just to kind of get timestamps and look at the edit. And I noticed throughout this podcast, because it's just us, so we're cutting up, we're having a good time, and I noticed that 479 different shots went to Gary's face and only 72 went to me and Bobby. I look, I get it. Gary, Larry Faust loves a little Larry Faust. Well, dude, the comments, all the comments just say, look, we only want to see Gary change the name to the Gary Faust show, stuff like that. <laughs> Go back to Gary. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, all, yeah. it's all about me, dude. I'm a narcissist. So dude. Gary Gary sees him up, but I was Narcissist. fucking with him. I was fucking with him with it. Yeah. Narcy. Hey, um, dude, you little narc. But I was gonna, I was gonna ask. Uh, I was gonna ask too. Uh, like, Ella. so when when did it all kind of fucking 
when did it all just kind of start falling in line? Because, I mean, you're doing great. You just got signed, correct, to yeah. a management company. Oh, let's just skip past our fucking college story. Which oh, oh the sorry, sorry. My, no, hey, no, no, see, no, this you, is what happens fucking... when you get laid. This <laughs> yeah, is yeah, yeah, dude, this is what I'm here for. All right, all right, all right. No, no crosstalk. Just keep telling the story. This is what happens when I have fucking 500,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking cock boy. Wow, dude. I, I, I had, a, I had a, I'm a smoking weed. I had a fucking brain fart, dude. Let me live, dude. Uh, that's good. All right, dude. Good. It's I want to get back to our guest. I'm going to edit this yeah, entire yeah, podcast awesome. without cutting to the fucking camera on laser. Hey, hey, no, Jeez. but so, hey, so Land, Lando sees me do there at fucking tower. Literally, I had to fucking. I saw you drop a motherfucker <laughs> outside. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked a motherfucker out. Yeah, Drew happy. I had, had to go like this. Yeah, go handle business. Hey, yeah. I, mean, I want to hear that story. Yeah. Or is it? Can we yeah, no, keep going. Tell it? It's fine. Yeah, you tell it. You tell it from your perspective. All right, you tell me if this checks out. So, so we're smoking weed and chilling and like fucking uh, playing like probably some sublime or some shit outside of the fucking tower hall. <laughs> and there was this dude that was just like barred out and like <laughs> creeping everybody out and just like was being a fucking piece of shit and wouldn't leave us alone or like leave. And so you just like you gave him the ultimatum pretty much and like told him like you're going to hit him or fucking he's going to leave and he didn't leave. So you fucking dropped him. <laughs> hey, one shot, one at a quitter, just sat him down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, so let, this is what happens. He was on like it, Xanax. It went, it went like so. this. Look, he's he's talking shit to everybody. And he literally starts making threats. Threat passes it like my friends because they don't want to buy weed from him. He's barred out. And I'm just like, dog, like you got to leave. Like ain't nobody fucking with you. He's just like, what the fuck are you going to do about it? And we're like on our knees, almost like we're, like we're playing dice. But we're just chilling when somebody's playing guitar. So I get up. And I literally fucking, after I warned him, I f- fucking grab his head and fake knee him. I stopped my knee right in front of his face because I am I was a psychopath. Like I said, I had to check myself in after this. But I fake knee him to the face. I grab his head and almost fucking knee him. I'm like, you break it the fuck out of here. So he gets up and puts his bag down and just comes at me. And I'm just like dodging. But then he's like, you know what I mean? He starts hitting me and I'm just like. Oh, bro, it's like your nightmare. You know what I mean? These hits feel good. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm oh, your worst nightmare. Dude, fucking juice just juicing me up, dude. So I put him down one time. Bop. I just take him down finally. I'm just like, I'm going to fucking beat the fuck yeah, out of him. Yeah, you bro. knew he was going to kill him. So yeah, yeah, dude. So I was like, all right, get up and go. You know what I mean? He's all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Well, he runs back at me. <laughs> and so that, 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 that's when that's whenever him. I fucking got him. And I fucking mm. just threw him. And as he went down, I just, like, kicking a field goal, dog. Oh. I just fucking just, blah. It felt like it felt like when, it. You hit, when you hit a home run, nothing's there. One time, there. one time, and that's it. That's all I had to do. But like, and I didn't even want to go deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? No, there's like, no reason. But afterwards, this dude comes up to Lando, thinking this moment, like you know, he's like, whoever beat the whoever beat me up or whatever. He's like, I just wanted to apologize, type shit. Literally comes from like the San Jack. He that's how you know you're on like Xanax. Yeah, because like, he comes back to up, apologize. Like, and I even remember I'm the one to fucking hit him. He's that's right, idiot. Sent that boy fucking sleep and counting sheep. You got any good fighting stories, Ellis? Man, I had my day. Man, I remember one time I saw you all fucked up because you got jumped. And we got fucking mad. I was like, who jumped your ass, dude? That was back in the motherfucking day. I was at Tower. That was before I withdrew. Like, it was crazy. We were a freshman year. Dude, dude y'all were hoodlums. Yeah, man. You know, you win some, you lose some, son. And uh, <laughs> sometimes you get the shit beat out of you by like 30 people. You know, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the wor- it's literally the worst feeling, get, getting jumped. Oh, it's yeah, like, because there's no cover, especially at nighttime. And if you can't really see who's fucking, who's fucking peppering you. I got jumped for a bag of weed when I was in eighth grade by some high school kids. Yeah. Like, I, I had a quarter pound on me that I got from my mom's boyfriend. And uh, and me and my yeah yeah, <laughs> that's the most white trash shit yeah. you've ever said. I was selling dope for him or whatever. And uh, me and my my cousin Cody was and he was fucked up because this girl used to babysit me, and she was like, yeah yeah my my and I I I went over their house earlier in the day and smoked and like I had my QP on me, and uh fucking like so they seen it or whatever and they're older they're they're like four or five that's years old right? yeah and so they see well, she called me later she's like yo we want to buy some more that like, we want to buy like an ounce and so i was like all right tight well my dumb ass like being a fu- oh cool i'm a drug dealer kind of guy i got car camouflage cargo pants from hollister because <laughs> I'm, I'm a fucking loser <laughs> yeah. you know catching hand jobs on the way yeah, to the lick hand jobs <laughs> the monkey bars and shit those would go for a lot now dude though. they're dude they're a hot item and i had my badass you know corona sandals with the fucking beer the, the beer thing where you <laughs> yeah, can pop yeah, off dude you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah. and uh 
I was like, all right, so you I know, put typical the, weed dealer shit. I put the fucking. Yeah. It's nighttime. They're like, yeah, meet us at uh, meet us at the fucking junior high at at, at where you know you go to school. And I said, all red right, flag. The junior high. <laughs> the, 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 no, this is where this is where it was a red flag. This is where it was a red flag, right there. So when we pulled up to the when we pulled up with them, they were it was it was three of them standing out. The girl and the two guys, and uh, and, and early was thirty. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking, she walks up. Well, she walks up onto like the driver's side, like where my cousin Cody is, and I'm sitting. And uh, I forget the boy's name, man. He's one of them. I think his name CJ. He was older than me. He was like way older than me. Uh, and he was from Beasley. Like I knew him. I seen him. I didn't know him, but I knew he was from there. So, but anyways, them two are like, "Hey, man, my buddy's back here. He wants to buy it, but he's back on the they're back over here on the tennis courts." And me just being naive and like, I'm not that. Okay, yeah, cool. Let's go over there. I get out of the car with my cousin. And my cousin told me, I laughed at that. He said he thought that was weird, but that girl was, like, talking to him, like, grabbing on his arm and, like, flirting with him and shit. And so I walk around. The fuck be like, dude, where's this guy at? And he's always right over here by the tennis course. And I walked through. I remember walking through the guy tennis course, and then, bow, I blacked out. Like, I remember just not seeing shit. Oh, you got knocked out? I got knocked out from behind. He hit me from behind and, and knocked me out. Well, I had my fucking ounce of weed in my left-hand cargo pocket. Well, I had my QP in my fucking right cargo pocket. And you fell on your right and side? And I fell on my left side like this, and they started kicking me and fucking punching me. And like, don't fight back. Just give us the fucking weed. I, I was like, oh, fuck. And I... Gave them a whole QP. Looking back, they didn't know I had it on me. They asked for an ounce. So I should have just lost that, but I wanted to lose on my whole QP. Then I, then I explained that to my fucking mom's boyfriend like a fucking pussy. Yeah. You know, then he's wanting to, like, go kill these fucking high school kids. And I'm like, you know, like, yeah. Maybe. If I ever catch one of them motherfuckers out again, I remember what that one motherfucker looked like. So, I mean, dude, I, you know what's crazy? I got fucking... You know what, dude? I, no I got smoke smoke have them on the pod. I got popped in the back of the head, too, by a hobo in Santa Barbara on State Street. My buddy and I were, were leaving a bar. Yeah. And there was this uh, old homeless woman with a dog, like a rabid dog. But I was a little bit fucked up. We were on Xanax. And I was like, I was like oh, that's, a, a that's a cute all. dog. That's a cute dog. And the dog starts, oh, oh, oh. And I'm yeah. like, oh, shit, lady. Like, get a, get a grip on your dog. And she's like, fuck you. And starts like saying all this crazy shit. I don't understand what she's saying. And there's these two guys on a bench behind her. And they're like, yo, step back, blah, blah, blah. And they were like those street crit, those street kid types, like not like you know an old vagrant homeless veteran, yeah, like, like twenty five years old, like fucking cut, dude. And my buddy, I was with my buddy Jared, <laughs> who had just got out of prison, and he's like, "Oh yeah, what are you gonna do?" And he squares up these people immediately, and he would have whooped both their asses. But I was like, "Hey, dude, you're on parole. I don't want you to go back to jail." He goes, "Okay," puts his hands down, boom, cold clocked. Knocked out completely, hits his head on the ground, starts having a seizure, and I'm like, I'm like, holy shit! And I turn around to go swing at this guy, and and the other dude's buddy is like six foot five, just blasted me in the back of the head. God I get I get damn, knocked out, and the the only reason I know this story is because the hostess at this bar called Baja Sharkies was like a like a half a block down to watch the whole thing happen because we had just left that bar, and she said that after they knocked me out, they picked me up by my belt loop in the back of my shirt and threw me headfirst into a palm tree. <laughs> They hey. fucking, they jazzy hey. Jeff jazz. Yeah, and they hey. took my sunglasses. Hey, <laughs> hey man. Hey, man. Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, f- fucking Fresh Prince of Bill yeah, your ass out there. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Yo. No. We should get him on the pod. Dude, uh, that's the most dangerous place you can get hit is the back of your fucking Oh, yeah. Head. That can kill you. Yeah, they don't allow that in professional fighting, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, at the <laughs> highest level of violence that you can get, you're not allowed to do that. It's the only time I've ever been knocked out. <coughs> oh, time I've yeah, been back yeah. there. I've been hit in the face and not... And been fine. You like punched me in the face and... and man. I didn't man. think twice. Dude, he cannot throw a fucking well, punch. Well, don't do it. Y'all don't were just boxing with him. Don't do it right now, dude. Go do it. Because he's going to come here, storm here, and beat the shit out of you. We're going to have to hire him. Dude, he'll fill this whole that place right up with that hire security in my house. Hey, you're talking about Eli Harper. I didn't realize it says it right there on the fucking guns and gigs. Yeah, he's got that flamethrower on there. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. says Eli hey, Harper. Hey, Ellis, hold that up. I want to zoom in on that. Eli's a good guy. He and a, a great, dude, a, a good, great fighter he, he and a great serial boxing. entrepreneur. Yeah, he had, he had a great know? boxing sesh, dude. Yeah, he was good. I don't ever see you there, Gary. He's uh, <laughs> got got a heart. You know what, thing. dude? I fucking uh, I I was going there every Tuesday for a while, and me and Ellis used to fucking uh, partner up and all that. But dude, once you have a heart attack, you don't really box. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. You know. Speaking yeah. of, did you guys spar? No, I did not. I uh, 
Yeah, I. Uh, no, we sparred at the end. What we did? You the, did. I yeah. didn't. Oh yeah. yeah, you went straight to the bag. Yeah, yeah. I'll go hit the bag and shit. I don't need to get punched or anything like that. Yeah, I was no, sparring with Brad. Like, I'm not. Any Brad of those does, people, does not dude. fuck around. No, dude, Brad, Brad gave you that big ass bruise on your dude, head, dude. Brad. Well, first of all, I was supposed to be getting hit on the body bag and the liver, and I was getting punched <laughs> on my hip bone for a fucking no like half hour. <laughs> And this dude's ripping. Yeah, these Brad shots. dude. It looks like I got. It looked like I got hit by a fucking bat, dude. 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 And I sent it to Andy the next day. And it was like, <laughs> like, yo, like, I'm is suing this, your gym. Is this, <laughs> is, I was like, it's like, yo, is this is this normal? And uh, <laughs> he sent me a picture of him up against the cage, bloodied and beat the shit, and was like, I don't know, man, I just can't relate. <laughs> Dude, Andy's a savage, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. Like that's whenever I really like, have him on. And like too. I've been in there, and like I've seen those people in there, and like I've seen real fighters in there, like real fighters. And I'm like, yo, I'm not you. I know that. Yeah, I'm not any of you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, yeah, Brad's you know? a psychopath. And if I remember correctly, the day that y'all were training partners, he had eaten like a fucking half a pound of mushrooms. Yeah, he he'll go for three days. Or, yeah. So he's just dude, not even hitting the bag. Dude, dude. He's, 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 he's not hitting the pad. He's just blasting. He's, he's, like the, the, uh, he's like the, the, the trees from the fucking uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, when they're dude. just fucking like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> swinging their long but, ass but arm. Guy, his, his testosterone's got to be through the fucking rift because he's always like, Brad's always, you know, but that motherfucker can throw hands and, and he's in got a cardio apocalyptic for days. world. Yeah, dude, he, Brad's got like dude, like thirty guy, wives. Like I love Brad; he's the nicest, calmest dude and shit. But like, oh, he's definitely he always taking psychedelics. He's Zen Brad, time. dude. He's Brad's Zen Brad. Chill. Dude, dude, he, he shits in his own backyard. <laughs> Yeah, dude. This, dude, this dude is he's, fucking he's prime. Pro, he's, saving, no, he's, primal. he's saving what? Oh, like, he's primal. He's saving like, what? Thirty bucks a month? He, 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 he's <laughs> like the shitter. But the thing about it is. He's yeah. not like a regular hippie laid back dude. Like he reminds me of like that dude uh, Tex from the guy that would kill the ch- uh, Charlie Manson, the the, te- the boy from Texas. Yeah, they call him Tex. That's who he reminds me of. Big and like just laid back, but like fucking will just gorilla your ass. Yeah, he reminds you of a serial killer. Dude, but the yeah, thing the is, too, though, tape, yeah, <laughs> Brad can like kickbox and shit, but he's also like good on the ground too. He's a really good jujitsu player as well. Which yeah, is pretty crazy. But that's the thing. Like when I got in there today, I was like. Start doing it. I'm like, fuck that competitive juice. Like, yeah, fuck this. Let's fucking get. It. And then I, I literally thought I was having an anxiety attack during the warm up. <laughs> when we started doing the high knees, I couldn't catch my breath, and I go, I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom. Twenty minutes into this, <laughs> did you what? did you run out? No, no I didn't. I just, have a heart attack. I was, in there. Like, I was like, if I have a heart attack, near, Gary Faust is gonna fucking shit on me for the rest of my life. <laughs> That'd be two for two <laughs> for old Andy. Thing, that's the first thing you're thinking of. You're not worried like, about the actual heart attack. He's like, dude, this would be embarrassing. I was like, dude, if I fucking come out of this alive, I'll never live it down, dude. Like, so better kill me now. I better die in warm-ups right now, dude. <laughs> dude, yeah, it's tough, dude. It's completely different than, like, uh, than grappling and stuff like that as far as, like, how, like, tired and shit. Well, yeah, it's all shit. cardio, essentially. Yeah, Boxing but it was fun, is. but I went and signed up, got the whole thing. I'll be going there. I'll be rolling, wrestling, doing all that shit, dude. It's fun. Nah, I'm not going to be drinking. I got to get my mind. I got to get focused on other shit. Because if I know if I was dog-ass tired like that, at, like how we were today, I would not want to go out and stay out all night at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like no, to go handle business. And get that's my the thing, ass, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Keeps that's you what check. I've learned, yep. man. Is like, it's good to be, Balance. it's good to be seen places. So, like, if you're out gigging or something like that, or maybe go catch some people's sets, or go catch your your homie shows or something. But like, you know, I'm at the house majority of the time, either writing or fucking like sending emails or trying to like make shit move. You know, or like I need these days, like I need fucking rest <laughs> to fucking get through like a full like you know Me too. weekend or some shit like that. You know, and like. Yeah. You know, that's like that's like the long. Let's tell you, like you know, longevity. Tell you whatever. preserve your fucking exactly. Because dude, my nose is falling off. <laughs> <laughs> Got that Belushi dude, shit going. It's on. Fine, right? Yeah, dude, I noticed. Right. I swear to God, the other day I noticed. It's like, dude, I've literally done 20, 27 days no, I've done lying. cocaine. Hey, you know what's no, crazy, dude? I mean, that's definitely something that you know nobody's built for, dog. Right. right. I'm just right. like, dude. Right. I, but yeah. I start thinking, I'm like, man, I have a problem. I have a problem. I'm fine. I have a problem. Yeah. I'm just doing like half a gram, and I'm not a problem. Then I'm like, dude. I'm doing cocaine every single fucking night. Like, I've got to stop. Dude, like, you know how we keep saying we're built different? <laughs> we're not. No. no, no. <laughs> we're playing. <laughs> we're fucking stupid things. We're, we're just, playing. I'm just built different. We're playing dude. a. Uh, okay. We're built in a different. We're, pl- we're playing a longer game dude, here. Dude, the, 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 the day that I had that heart attack, I was with my buddy, JD. 
right before we went to Latchkey, and I'm, I remember I ha- you. I, I remember had one beer. I remember you started freaking out. I was talking about how I didn't feel good, and JD goes, "Hey man, maybe you should just need to slow it down." He go, he literally said, "You're not John Belushi," and I was like, "Okay, I'm built different." <laughs> Boom! Almost died. <laughs> Yeah, also the music will carry you away. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the B-boy to free my soul. Life is a driveway. <laughs> Lost in your rock and roll. We drift away. Drift away. I'm not the one who's so far away. Who said that hey, you speaking of that. Uh, <laughs> Could you no, imagine I if you I were want... going out and that's the song hey. you heard in the radio? <laughs> dude. dude, we put it on on our dude. way out, dude. Dude, uh, I was talking uh, to one of my boys that I worked with for a long time in the oil field, and yeah, he's had a baby and shit, and he don't really do social media thing, but he did see a clip uh, from the pod, the one, the, the lost episode with Hank, the real one. He goes, couldn't make it as a rough <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck, yeah. Uh, couldn't make it as a car. He goes, dude, everyone out here fucking died laughing. Like, he goes, that was the funniest shit we've ever seen. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, that's tight. Yeah, dude, too bad my yeah, fucking dude, laptop Hank's got badass. stolen. Yeah. yeah. Hank's the, uh, like... Unsung hero of like the uh, yo, he was cracking me up he's, last he's night. He's super cool. That dude, fucking that dude's funny. He's that got a well. badass taste of music too. He's like, he's, he's yeah, always he's sending me fucking, fucking like deep cuts from all kinds of shit, <laughs> put me on stuff. Yeah, well, we do. There's like, there's like ever like an attractive girl in the bar, you know what I mean? He's like. You know what I mean? You could tell Hank, like, damn, dude. He's like, yeah, if she had a dick, she'd be better. (laughs) 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 Shit like that, dude. And he's just like, all big. I'm just like, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 100%. Yeah, he's all like seven feet tall. Uh, Bobby, uh, real quick. What? Update. What's up with the hair, dude? Are you, are you getting it fixed? Or what are we doing here, dude? Did you comb your hair? Did you brush it out? Yeah, yeah, partially. What does that mean? I still got a ways to go. <laughs> I still got a ways to go with it, but you know what I mean? That's neither here nor there. I've just been busy. <laughs> this entire South by Southwest was fucking wild. Yeah. It, was, it was a blast, but, you know, I'm just, you know. You I got any big plans? My hair now. Huh? You got any big plans? Like for the up and coming? <laughs> for your no. life. <laughs> uh, yeah, for, the hair, for the hair, like are you just going to go get like a big Brazilian blowout or like what are you like? Well, no, I just got to brush it out and then I just got to get it fucking trimmed. Hey, you know, you, it's been a long time that I've been saying that, about a year and a half now that I've been saying the same thing. And how long would your hair be if you straightened it? <laughs> fucking long. It oh, probably, probably like, down to your butt, uh, past your butt. Past yeah. my ass. Yeah. Past my ass. Past me flask. Uh, See me in the back of the hey, class taking whoa, notes whoa. on how to right, cast dude. some ass. We yeah. already talked about the ketamine raps, dude. Not up here, dude. dude. <laughs> right, hey, dude. hey, refrigerators <laughs> are hard. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, My I, grandpa's staring right at you. <laughs> 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 Hey, so uh, Why, hello there. <laughs> so, how serious are you about your sobriety, Laser? Dead serious. As far as like, what made was there like a catalyst that made you get sober? <clears throat> Literally, the realization of being like, "Yo, I've done fucking drugs." Oh. Watching well, your sets, where you just watching my sets. No, it was watching my best, it was watching my best friend try to open up refrigerator the other night, slam drunk. Oh yeah, and he was uh, struggling to like hold on to it like this, and he just fell on the floor. I thought for <laughs> dramatic effect, and like the three ugly chicks that were over there rushed to his aid, and I go. <laughs> What am what I a, doing? What a fucking loser. <laughs> what a fucking well, loser. Yeah, what a dumbass. Yeah, who would do I, that? Bobby gets up and doesn't remember in there. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? I was like, dude, refrigerators are hard, aren't they? Like, he's just, he hung on that fucking handle for about an hour. Like a tree frog? Like, like just, yeah, yeah. We're going to clip, clip that part out. But, uh, <laughs> no, 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 uh, all right. He well, were drinking, and we got fucked yeah, up. Yeah, people dude. don't got to be so dramatic. All right. And like, I just realized, I was like, leave. yo, that's, that's, it's just time. I'm, okay, we're going out every, it's a motherfucking Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, and, and I'm watching my buddy, yeah. you know, it was just stupid. And then cause he stay up and he stay up doing cocaine till like eight in the morning and I'll sleep five. I like, I don't have, I'll sleep till five the next day and blow off everything that I needed to do. I, I just, I just, look, if I have plenty of And have, shit. like, you know, mental breakdowns on podcasts. Well, that's what happens yeah. when you know Mental drink breakthrough, all the time. dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, mental breakthrough. Don't See, enable I him, need... Ellis. Don't enable See, him. See, this is what no, I need. I need, another, I need another man in my corner that knows what's going on. <laughs> Are you going to replace Bobby with Ellis? <laughs> <laughs> There's some fucking beers in that fridge? I'm kidding. There's, <laughs> There's no, one. By, by, by all means, drink and shit, though. I just know. And I'm not going to never not drink again, but if I'm in any vicinity where I know I can 
access some blow like that, it's good. I'm gonna get it. But that's the well, thing is like you you don't want to like get to a point to where like you associate that with, with like that. with doing something. So it's like like oh shit, I'm drinking or like drinking and do like same way with like I don't want to feel like sometimes I'll go out and play a set and I'll just smoke weed and I won't drink at all just so I can flex that muscle of me going out and going to go play a show and not drinking at all. Yeah. Be- and like that's like a hard thing to fucking do cuz it's really easy to get caught up, dude, right. in a good goddamn time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like you got to really like work on that. And some people can and some people can't, dude, but it's like if you can catch it early, you yeah. know, like like you did, you can like you yeah, know, every, you can manage. You can, you can still thing. go out, you know yeah. what I mean, but don't drink and like fucking uh, don't you know don't the well, you know that's it, that's you just know? how some people handle pressure, dude. I mean, you know, imagine having three hundred four thousand followers. Just so that's much just pressure, tough. Dude. Oh no, dude, definitely you could break a man. You could have a mental breakdown. D- a mental breakthrough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but like, he could have a break. Dude, down this, delete this, it all. Is, this is when I knew it was a problem, right? When I, I got off stage in fucking uh, when I got off the stage in Tampa, goddamn beautiful city, great people too. But when I got off a of stage, you know, I go out there, take pictures or whatever, and, you know, fucking sell shirts and stuff with the people, and they're lining up, and, like, this is the first show of the first night. And I had, like, 30 people come up to me, like, yo, I just want to take a bump with Uncle Laser. Like, will you do some of my cocaine? Will you do some of my cocaine? And I'm like, guys, this is 30 bumps. I can't. I literally. <laughs> yeah. you're and, gonna, and, I, and, like, you know what we're talking about? Stop energy. one. <laughs> you're talking about energy the other day. You want to, like. I want to leave people with a good impression. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a shirt, fucking. I mean, it's impolite. Up. It's impolite. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm over there just. <clears throat> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And by the time I get up on stage, I'm like, uh, and I'm just like, dude, it, it, it's not sustainable. So it yeah, ain't a made. Well, that's it, why it, you got to do. It's like you keep everything its own thing, but. A steak is better with mashed potatoes sometimes. Hey, ah, damn, Bobby. Damn, Bobby. Sometimes a beer is good with a butt. Yeah. The, the, ah. shot, the shot over the shoulder. You over here fucking flinging coke. Yeah, just flinging out my nose. <laughs> I'll drink 30 beers, but I'm not going to take 30 bumps. Yeah, dude, but it's just like, yeah. But then, like, because, you know, and then, like, just the aspect of feeling better, too. Like, if I don't drink. Dude, like, cocaine regret, me. dude, that tax that comes the next day with that shit is just. Man, I've gotten so good at it. I don't even have a come down. Me, I don't even have a come down. I go right to sleep. Yeah, yeah, I dude. When you, when you I were go to sleep on it after I'm done pissing a thousand times. When you were in Tampa and you told me, yeah, dude, I fucking got off stage. I did forty thousand bumps in a row. I, 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 you were so proud of yourself, and I was just like, hey, take it easy, relax. I told you to be ca- actually. I said be careful, and you know what? Yeah, well, then I start seeing some of the video from that playback on my stage time. I'm like, what in the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah, dude? Wow. I'm like, dude, like, it's You look like, like a cracked out like, I, I, I get it. I, like, I get it. I'm not going to be... I'm funny, right? I'm not going to be everybody's comedy. Like, I understand that. But, dude, up there, I'm like, yo, this is hard to watch. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, yo, this is bad. And dude, imagine, like imagine watching everything. back that Kill Tony episode. Oh, I haven't dude. even looked at that. I, I, know, I know for a fact with... Uh, <laughs> I literally take the fucking green, the bottle from the green room, the crown room, the crown room. I walk in there, and I go, "This is mine now." Like, I, I, where I don't know what in the fuck in my head was making me think, "Hey, this is gonna go over so good." <laughs> you went full gremlin, dude. Mode, I went. Dude. Well, I had I had the minute already planned out. I planned the minute. I planned the minute wasn't terrible. It was, it was a decent minute. I didn't, it, it, is that how you planned it to go? <laughs> well, no, no. I just the minute <laughs> really? went better you, than what you always. You is pivot that too really much. How you planned what? it? To go? You pivot too much. What do you, you mean? Did the same thing before Roseanne. You pivoted. Well, like second. I'm always thinking, like, because I'm always reading it up until I walk up Stick there. Stick to like, the plan. I, man. I might need to, but then when I saw David, because on that episode for some particular reason, David Lucas, like his 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 roast shit that he always gets pops on. He's a fucking savant at it when, when he's going with Tony, but it really wasn't getting like the response that I you know he usually gets. And I go, what the fuck? And like he even mentions it in the episode, he, like wipes some sweat off. It's like, God damn, it just ain't working. I and like I could tell, like he wasn't frustrated, but I could tell it wasn't going as smoothly as he thought. So like that made me instantly. I'm thinking like, fuck, okay. It's a different, something's wrong. So, like, I'm thinking, all right, I need to pivot something. Maybe I try to roast him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I go at him. That was terrible decision. Yeah. Terrible you always got to stick to the plan, man. I mean, like, cause that, but that's not in my nature of comedy. I don't really do that. I mean, I, like, shit on myself and stuff and, like, make a stab every once in a while. But I don't just actually actively like to go out and roast somebody. I don't like that. I like it right here. Uh-huh. But on stage, it's like, I don't know. But, yeah, that was weird. I, but it's, what I'm saying is being that fucked up and doing all that dumb shit, it's just, like, it's a whole different. I can now, I I was, you always think of yourself, you're like, separate. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I was, my mom, she's like, I don't have a problem. Yeah, you get up and go to work every fucking day, but you have a drinking problem. you're a problem. functional You're a functioning alcoholic. alcoholic. And that's when I start looking at it. I'm like, God damn, dude, like, I've literally just been lying Like, you know, you know who has to admit they have a problem? 
Kyle because he's dysfunctional. <laughs> Dude, leave. But I'm leave. just saying, he's, he's a just great kid. All of us. No, but he's everybody, a good guy. you know what I mean? You always have to acknowledge whenever it's becoming a fucking problem and. Fix yeah, you know, you just nip it in the bud. You know? I just wish I could have done it after the Roseanne episode and not the fucking cringiest episode in the world. You know what I'm saying? But hey, you live in your it life. happens. But dude. sometimes, in like Shia Chris DiStefano told me he hates you. No, that's <laughs> fine. Hey, with every with every reason he should. I mean, I was terrible about it. I'm kidding. All right, but uh, he is a handsome young man with glasses, though. Um, Chrissy yeah. D, shout but, out. Um, but sometimes you have to fail like that, like fall on that, and like be reminded, like, oh, you're not as tough as shit as you thought. You know what I'm saying? Like failure makes you grow. You know, like hitting yeah. the bottom, you like, all right, well, that was that was god off. I don't want to feel yeah. like that again. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, yeah. You get, you, get, you get seven months in, you crash and burn. <laughs> you you gotta fucking <laughs> back to the oil fields, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to. Uh, you'll start to develop a fucking long <laughs> list of shit you don't want to do or shit that you shouldn't do again, yeah. and like you know. I'm just you know, but you know, is you get caught up in that fucking atmosphere, dude. Like it's a party. Comedy is like, really easy for it to happen. Yeah, oh, music definitely. you gotta like you know you're up there. So, but dude, like when we're in them fucking green rooms and there's all the people around, like I'm like yo. This is tight right, right. Also, like, also, I, it's so, crazy. something I've noticed from hanging out with musicians as opposed to comics is that you can fuck up a comedy show and people will be like, yeah, whatever. You fuck up on stage playing music, it's way more embarrassing. Well, I think, I think too, with it, because like if you're fucked up and you have a bad set, you can blame it on, oh, it's a bad set. But when you really know you're drunk, but when you fuck up music, how it's supposed to be played, it throws everybody else and off. Everybody and everybody knows. Everybody, and it That's all what sucks, I'm saying, yeah. you know? So I think on that aspect, you can, like, you can get away with it more there, but. Dude, it's it, that fucking that atmosphere, and I just walked into it like I've been partying on this. I've been on this rig for all these years. Like mm. I gotta go back there. To, I'm like I'm just fucking gonna get ignorant, you know, like all the time. And I'm just like, oh, this is not how you're supposed to live life. You can't. It's not. It's these aren't days off. What people don't realize about comedy off. is that you got to treat it like a job. Yeah, and straight it's, up. Same yeah, with music, dude. It's everything. Yeah. Did you ever go and battle any substance abuses that you'd like to talk about or share? <laughs> I don't want to take all the drug talk. <laughs> no, man. I've like I've never had like any fucking problems with anything. Oh, uh, oh yeah, dude. Lucky you. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we got you on the podcast, Mister Perfect. I'm not a fucking <laughs> pussy. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. So no. you, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, so you met uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard the other night at Sam's. San, oh no Sam's shit. Bur- Sam's point. No, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, I've done my fair share of fucking up, and like, I definitely agree with y'all, but. To touch on that, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I, I met Ray the other the other night over. Well, I've seen him a handful of times. I, I whenever I was in San Marcos, I used to see him all the time at the Little H E B. Did you ever see him at the Songwriter Swap that uh, Kent Finley used to do? Uh, I never went down there because I never had the nuts to do it. Really? Yeah. No shit, dude. But uh, John Tyler, shouts out to to Jonathan uh, of the he, Northern Lights. Yeah, he yeah, introduced I, me to uh, to Ray on Saturday, so I was hanging out with Ray. Uh, over at Sam's Town Point, and a uh, super cool dude. Yeah, yeah, he's super laid back. I've met him once before, too. Really yeah. nice guy, just super laid back. Like, how you would think he'd be. Yeah. yeah. He's the coolest fuck. Like, he's literally, like, fucking, like, cool as Cool. Like, you, just, you yeah. can't, you, like... Hey, cooler than the other side of the pillow. Son, yeah. you fucking you jump on Google Image Search and fucking type in fucking cool. This is what I was going to ask you. I forgot. Sorry, we've been scattered these questions. I'm just, I'm high as a guy right now. I'm not going to lie to you, boys. <laughs> so, so sobriety's going great. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm good. I, the weed and mushrooms, too. weed and mushrooms, yeah. I like that. Because I, do I don't do it often. Yeah. I do it to when I need, like, just take a break or reset. I will so, say, dude, if I take a little microdose of mushrooms before I go out, it makes it that much easier for me to say no to whatever. Else. Really? Yeah. yeah. Is that a, Gary, yeah. can you Google that? Is Sweet. that a real thing? Yeah, it is. Some real, people are like that. It's experience. Yeah. Some people are like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, they use LSD to wean people off of alcoholism and smoking cigarettes. Yeah, and they also use ketamine to wean people off of opioids. They also use they? LSD to get people to incite a race war and, and get people to murder it. people. You know what? That's, <laughs> that's a good point, dude. What do you say? Uh, they, uh, the CIA used LSD and MK Ultra to, to turn Charles Manson into a serial killer. And get him to incite a race war. And, and I don't need to Google that. Helter? Skelter? Have you ever read the book? <laughs> no, hey, damn near killed her, son. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, the you Beach Boys, Dennis Wilson, was friends with Charles Manson, and they wrote some songs together. Yeah. And one of the songs that, that Charles Manson wrote for the Beach Boys was called Never Learn Not to Love You. And if you listen to it, it and, like, the words blend together a little bit, it's, ne- uh, I'm your kind, I'm your kind, and I see. And it almost sounds like he's saying, I'm your kind, I'm your kind of Nazi. It's weird as fuck. But it's like a hidden meaning in a song that people claim, at least. 
But it's weird. Look that shit up. Sure. You know, if you rewind Stairway to Heaven, it goes, here's to my sweet Satan. Have you ever actually done that? I have. Yeah, I, I have too. Yeah. I, did, I did it on the actual like old school recorder thing where you could record the song and play it back. And it was just, it fucking does do that. It's it all does, Satan yeah. and wow. Nazis, dude. That's what that's what runs yeah. the world, and they're after and, us. And when I read you it, know what I think about <laughs> Satan and Nazis, dude? What, dude? Fucking pussy. Fucking pussy, dog. Pussy. <laughs> Running with the Lord, baby. Hey, girl, pop that pussy. God fearing man right here. So. Um, but this is what I was going to ask, uh, getting back on topic here. When did it all start taking off? Because I know you were coming up, coming up, and then you started getting like a little bit of the residencies. And I remember they Rogan and them saw you out at the White Horse, right? And is that when it kind of is that when it? Because obviously you get something like a shot like that, it jolts. But you were already you already had residency there at White Horse and shit prior to that. But I mean, like, did you see like I mean, because when I get like, yo, one of my good friends just got yeah, that's mentioned. A long ass question, dude. You need to get better at fucking asking questions, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, take a note out of my book. Dude, there was a ketamine drip thing that we were going to have to pitch at the end for sponsorship, but you're not getting one now. <laughs> okay? I'll take that one. Right, you'll, be, you'll be Mr. Non-Ketamine for here going forward, dude. <laughs> you play your cards right, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is, it, did that pop help at all? Or oh, like just no, yeah, hey, definitely. Hey, move uh, that hat. But it wasn't like, uh, like, like just Rogan, like, fucking, I linked back up with Bobby, dude, and, like, I invited Bobby out to our show over at the Rustic Tap, and he had already been, like, hanging out with Tony and been good friends with, with Tony for a minute, and he was like, hey, we're gonna bring Tony over to our show, and I was like, cool, that'd be dope. So Tony came out and saw us play, and then, like, they kind of, like, he helped shoe us into that New Year's Eve show, and so we were hanging out with Tony and, like, made, uh, you know, linked up with Tony and, like, you know, became homies, and, um, Right, it's like right around that time, like the we've been playing that residency over at the White Horse and stuff like that. Or actually, dude, to tell you the truth, I sat down with Tony over at the Buzz Mill, and Tony was like, "You need to do it." Nether's doing. You need to get like a night, you know, like you need to have one of your own nights or whatever. And so um, we ended up uh, getting a residency at the White Horse. And so we Which is dope. It's yeah, fun. yeah. And it's in a prime spot. Because no to bullshit, yeah. dude. I've got emails from like 2013. Me emailing them. You know, me trying to to get in over there and play. And like, thank God that didn't work out. Because you weren't ready back then. I fucking sucked. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I still do. But uh, man, yeah. So, anyways, uh, we are playing a show that night, and our first show of the day was fro- I got froze out. It was supposed to be at. Uh, Allen's boot company down off Congress and they canceled, but the white horse didn't and uh, shit gig dude fucking called this shit. They're like, there's like 16 people in there or some shit like that. The homies. And then like the last 20 minutes of the gig fucking you, uh, Rogan fucking, he brought like him and Tony pretty much brought out all the homies and they all came in and, uh, we met Rogan and his people that night. And uh, they were super cool, super laid back. And uh, we kind of just started popping up a little more. Like, our next residency was right behind where Rogan has Rogan was having his, like, uh, when Tuesday and Wednesday night shows. So we'd bump into him in the alley or, um, you know, go say what's up to him in the green room or whatever. And he's just, you know, just fucking nice dude, you know. And, um, yeah, his pops, like, whenever he, like, shouts us out or whatever, it definitely, like, puts us on more people's radar. But it's, like, you know, we're fucking, you know, f- forged through the, like, we're, like. Yeah, the, you got to uphold your end. Yeah, we're we're ready for it now, though, you know. Yeah. Like, we've already eaten all the shit sandwiches and played all the gigs and got some tunes now to where, like, when, whenever we get given an opportunity or something like that, it's, like, you know, we can go crush that gig or, like, yeah. you know. You're ready. Yeah, I'm ready, ready. for it. Yeah, you know, it's, hungry, dude. It, isn't it kind of weird that uh, somebody who has nothing to do with music shouting you out on their podcast sort of legitimizes the the band to a degree? Or at least it seems that way. Well, yeah, it's all about following, right? You I know mean, what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, just, if you go in their comments, just, everyone's talking shit about us. But well, this, hey, <laughs> hey, welcome, <laughs> from, welcome to the internet, bud. <laughs> people, tr- people trust his word, bro. Right? No, and, so. no, and, and, no. Right he, he, so. he's, right. he's a shepherd that leads his flock. I mean, like yeah. they, they like, there's people that like. He's I mean, a fuck, super when you cool have, dude. When you have that many fucking eyes and ears 
on something, on any kind of product. Really? It makes you so, I mean, you're almost as like a, a politician or a rock, you know, like you're, you're able to sway people to a certain way, which is well, super what, cool. What he but, is, but he, is, a, is a thought leader, but, but But not only that, but one thing I love about the Rogan shit, though, is like he doesn't pick a side. Now, some people say like he'll say some things to be more passionate about, but I don't see like I've had, there was a time where he had a guy come on that was talking about zero carbs or, or calorie counting. And like he let them two argue it out while he just kind of sat back and like, that was one of the best episodes. I was cracked out of my mind driving back from Disney World with that fucking bitch's stepkids. And I just put a bunch of Benadryl <laughs> in, 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 in a vodka in their Benadryl and they passed out so they fucking quit talking to me. What's that? What's that? That was uh, probably 10 years ago. So there's past the statutes of limitations whenever he was, uh, you know, driving yeah. this lady home. Yeah. No, no. What? Fuck. You took that from a fucking song. What? The Benadryl. Little bit of vodka. Uh, yeah. I mean, but that was, that's the thing in the South that they do. My yeah, mom yeah, used to yeah. do it all the time. That explains a lot. Yeah, yeah it explains a lot. What yeah, fucking a, song is that? Uh, little bit of vodka yeah. in my life. Little bit of vodka. Mama number five. <laughs> that's uh, like, no, that's uh, vodka number five. <laughs> that's uh, that's, uh, Mambo that's number that. Uh, Vega, baby. Hey. Which is, hey, Lennon, it's a uh, little bit of vodka going. Oklahoma. Ja- ja- oh, Choctaw Bingo. Choctaw, Choctaw Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, yeah, That's, who, who is a Ray Wiley tune? James Monk. Or James McMurtry. Yeah, James McMurtry made yeah. it big, yeah. popular. Classic, classic, classic. Yeah, but it's good. But anyways, um, yeah, he, he, he just lets people, like, that pop, that stuff like that, like, he lets people talk and have a voice, and I'm, that, you know, and like, like you said, it, like, it's shit he's doing here for the comedy scene, too, like, just, but the fact of the stars lining up, obviously, you know, y'all was gonna make y'all's way regardless, without any help, any which way, but I mean, it's cool how, like, shit just kind of happens or falls in line like that, you It's know? super dope. Like, everyone thinks that, like, like, like you reach out and you ask him or something, like, hey, can you mention this on your pod or some shit like that? And it's like, man, that's not how it works. Or, like, no. You know, I'm never going to ask that. You know, they speak into that, Mike. Never ask nobody for nothing, you know? And, like... I uh, want to be cool enough to where they want to say it on their own. Yeah, you know well, I mean, saying? he's just a nice dude, dude. And, like, you know, like, he, he happens to fucking to really dig our stuff. When you you're know? good, you're good, dog. Like, that's just it. And whoever sees right. you is, is going to acknowledge yeah. that if you're upholding your end so that's all it comes down to is upholding your end because you never know who is gonna be there right yeah. you know what i mean it's the same with anything but like he sees the grind bro i think he recognizes how hard that we work and that's well, what he appreciates good. it's unlike any kind know. of high when you have a fucking stellar Jeez. set so that's the yeah. high chase you know what i mean no oh, shit good set takes him uh, out yeah this uh, is an intervention <laughs> yeah i uh i guess that's a high i'm yet i'm still seeking because <laughs> i've been high 90 percent of the time yeah no it's gonna be all right dude it's all right dude i'll change up the dark strings dude you get a second chance, a second chance. Yeah, you're gonna be the comeback kid, dude. If you if you actually you know put actually the I'm just gonna kill that. myself. No, no, I'm good. Abel, I just let's, wanna make sure you're still here. Love you, dude. We're almost done. Yeah, dude, let's rock. Well, I mean, you're still let them know. Well, yeah, because I, I still there's still a couple more questions I want to ask. Oh, okay. Just, uh, well, I, 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 I'll, I'll make. I mean, go ahead. No, no, ask, yeah, ask. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's four minutes past four. I had to be done twenty minutes ago. But yeah, ask fifty seven more fucking <laughs> questions, dude. How about you be on time? And be fucking professional. Ask your questions. Don't talk to me. Ask your questions. Hey, how many clips you cut last night? Wow. Don't you point Don't, that fucking pin at me. Don't ta- you point that. I whole, took a boxing class this morning, this Larry. Entire Mom and Dad are fighting again. This entire podcast, one camera. <laughs> We no, call but it, ask the question. We, all right, we call it the carry cut. Um, no, dude. So, uh, just to promote a little bit more of your shit. What about uh? So, what what all does the sign in with that uh, management company? What all does that entail? What is all that? How is shit going to change for or, you know? Because that just happened recently, huh? Yeah, we signed with Six AM Management or Six A Management. Excuse me, Six A Management. And y'all also had that record label with F, with with FSG, right? Yeah, we signed a, a deal with uh, FSG, a, a local record uh, label here in that's, Austin. That's that's where we had the the roast, the roast, mm-hmm. the Gary Bobby roast. Just put that in the ash mug. All right, yeah, sure. Yeah, man, it's dope, dude. Like, um, <laughs> we're happy to partner with with these people, and it's like another hat off my head. You know? Yeah, a little help. Right, and these people have resources, and, like, Jake's a, a hard worker and an honest dude and, like, uh, a workhorse. And so, like, uh, you know, we've got him out there, like, you know, seeking out opportunities for us, and if he tees it up for us, we knock it down and we keep Keep, keep moving. Rolling. Yeah. Damn. So let me, just because I'm curious, like, with shit already set up like a residency, right? Like, you already set up at the White Horse prior to getting that. Do they, does that cut in? Do they get a percentage of that now, or how does that work? I mean, yeah, he'll get his, uh, his cut. Off of our entire, like, our net, like, whatever we make for, like, like let's say, like, the whole month, he gets, like, a cut from it. But it's all shit that's, like, you know, if we're playing private parties and, like, playing, like, gigs where we're making a shitload of money, then, like, it, that's just a fucking, it's peanuts. 
You yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. It don't matter then, but and that's what hopes. And it's been talking. good. Yeah, 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 yeah that's that's what it makes it like you know like we 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 were making money before we partnered with them, and now we re- can really start making making money. some real motherfucking yeah, yeah. money. Yeah. yeah, you know, and it's got to be. It's all about timing. It's all about you know feeling things out and you know working with the right people and stuff and. Um, you know, for some people, it may, it might not be, you know, for them, you know, I'm, it's, um, in this day and time, there's so much shit that you can do to kind of like fill that position until the time's ready, you know, but I think that I, I'm ready for that, you know, so, uh, I'm happy to give that up so I can focus more on being creative and having more time to do stuff like that. You know, that is true. All the, the, the time is the most important part, you know what I mean? So the more time you could have to actually hone in on your craft, which is curating the vibe with your music when you perform, and the less you have to worry about that business shit. And like you said, dog, if you're getting paid more, you ain't getting fucked. People are just getting paid to help you get paid more. And that's, you know what I mean? That's something I get behind. That's growth, man. I mean, that's the next step. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I'm proud of you, dude. So I just yeah. want to say that. Congrats, Peace. motherfucker. <sighs> Yeah. You want to go? Do we need to go, Gary? I know you need to get doing your stuff. Or do you want to keep? No, going? we can just keep doing it. But you're gonna owe me a bunch of extra money. No, I can't afford it. Dude. No, no, I gotta I pay my bills. I don't have a media. No, t- keep, keep recording. No, I can't, dude. No, it's actually fine. You can keep recording. I don't have any money. Gary, do you have any questions? No, it's fine. Record, Gary. Do you have any, Gary. Record the fucking show, Gary. <laughs> uh, Bobby, when's the album coming out? <laughs> Never. Okay, Gary, you got any questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're fucking. I fuck was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, maybe I need to do my sets high. <laughs> dude, yeah. you got to do this on stage. No, you're crushing, I've done this. Dude. I've done this on stage. <laughs> hey, I, hey, on stage. No, no, I've done this on stage, and it was god awful. Oh. And I think it, my anxiety was heightened because I was so high, and I knew like you guys I don't want to be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like me. No, I was like fumbling through words, forgetting jokes, like. Where's my car keys? Where are my car keys at? Like, dude, it was bad. It was bad. Dude. Yo, car I keys suck, bit dude. didn't hit. <laughs> my bugger, dude. I literally hit him. Stop calling me queer. <laughs> Bobby, don't fuck with me, dude. Um, no, I asked most of my questions. I just was uh, trying to formulate questions earlier that would uh, help anybody watching that doesn't know about honky tonk music, country music, understand it a little bit more. But I, it's it's you know. Kind of out of my wheelhouse, honestly. I enjoy the music, but I'm not a dick about it, dude. I'm telling you, uh, Cocaine Rhinestone start. Yeah, I'm gonna actually right. check that start out episode well. right. episode right. one, dude. Well, I know I know some of the backstories of some of those guys. <laughs> you know, like the the um like David Allen Co killed that guy and then went to prison <laughs> and shit like that. Like it, that's a lot of the outlaw country though. But I don't know the honky tonk stuff. Yeah, well, just the golden age of it. I mean, because yeah. there's a th- well, here's a question then. There's a difference between honky tonk and outlaw country, and then even like pop country and all that. What's the difference there? Just tempo. And what swing, makes honky right? tonk honky tonk? Yeah, just listen to it. Yeah, you, you can just tell. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Great, great. At just listen. To Our it. song is a streaming screen door. That's not country music. You know what I'm saying? That's pop country. Am I right? I mean, that's a good old pop country. It's like so, the the Green Tractor bullshit song. Yeah, well, that was more. But see, that was '90s when it was kind of transitioning, getting out of the golden age and getting into pop country, right? Am I, am I right? My timeline, because I remember like '95, '96. Alan Jackson still prevalent, like in his prime. Dude. The 80s was but I mean '80s funny, too. Shit. But like that's when Young George Stray, But everything. Thing was in the mid nineties. Remember being little, listening to that shit. And the highest like, offender, like where it all, I'll say, like the genesis, where like we've reached like peak. There's no turning back. Was when Nelly got with Tim McGraw in like two thousand and three. <laughs> Over <laughs> here, <laughs> and there's no turning back from there. At hand. one point, we could have just fucking turned off the experiment and been like, "All right, man, fucking bury this like deep in the desert, Area Fifty Three, yeah, and we'll never talk about this again." But it's a money machine, dude. Oh god, That's they why. said back it up. Money it's a money machine, dude. And I yeah, think that man. just goes to like the common listener, like. It just, know. dude, it's all Suits, just, no, you whatever you're Suits into, involved, you're though. into, dude, you know, it's just not, that shit's not for me, you know? Right. I still want to know what, what really does differentiate Honky Tonk, though, from other country music. That fucking swing, I, it's a swing, dude. Steel guitar. There's, the, the steel guitar, the swing, the fucking attitude of it, you like, know what I mean? There's a difference between, like, whenever you listen to, um... Like, let's say you're listening to George Strait in the 80s when he was with, like, the Ace and the Hole Band, and they were really, like, like a Texas swing band almost, you know yeah. what I mean? And then in the 90s, you know, 
it kind of starts going into more like uh, songwriter love stuff. Well, good Dean Dillon tunes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you know, and then like the two thousands, you know, late two thousands. Now you've got fucking stars on the water featuring you know auto tune and like all kinds of stuff, man. It's just stars like, on the water is a good song. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you kind of fucking me, right? I, I love that goddamn song. <laughs> it's good. I've seen you fucking. Swang fucking females oh, around. Dude, the la- the, uh, this last Sunday, that one girl, that one girl filmed me dancing with the other girl, and I fucking take my hat off and so smoothly put it on her head as I'm swinging. I'm like, God damn, I'm even impressing myself here. Nice. And she uh, left that night. That's a skill Colorado. set that you do have. I like to cut a rug, fucking dude. Cut a fucking rug, dude. I like, when no eyes are on me, it's like, hey, look at me, dude. Fuck that band. You're a jitterbug <laughs> son of a gun, buddy. Jitterbug. Jitterbug. Yep. <laughs> jitterbug. <buddy>. Jitterbug. <laughs> well, man... <laughs> I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, and hell setting yeah, up shop with us, dude. Uh, where can the people check you out? Where they can find you? Where can they find you next? I'll remember, this comes out a week later, so cool. Well, a week later from today, come hang out with us over at the Seven Gram Whiskey Bar from nine to eleven, uh, and then we'll, the next night we'll be over at the White Horse uh, from ten to midnight. Um, yeah, visit our website ellisbuller dot com. You can keep up with our show dates there. Merch? You got any merch? You got merch? Uh, huh? Hats and koozies and the whole nine yards, ain't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you'll be able to get our, our merch uh, here in like a couple of weeks uh, in a couple of different spots. Uh, one of them, you'll be able to go to the uh, the FSG like physical spot, and yeah. they'll, they'll have an artist rack where they'll have like all their different artists Across like the merch Rooms. up there. And uh, former expose, son. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, we're, we're we're working on getting our online uh, stuff rocking and rolling. If not, just get to a live show and uh, get you a merch. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Ellis Bullard and uh, just Ellis Bullard band. I always liked Ellis Bullard and the boys. Nah, it's just Ellis Bullard, man. Ellis, uh, Ellis Bullard. I don't, I don't really want to like uh, stress myself out with. No, keep it simple. Keep it simple. right. It's less ink, you know. Less. Why'd you shirts come up cheaper. with that name? It's my middle name. Hey, you know, you know, <laughs> you know what? It's a good this, reason. This is a funny. <laughs> this is, this is funny uh, Bramble, everybody knows Bramble. Yeah, we might have to have him on. Come on, my house. We'll get, we we get, we get Bramble on here. We'll Come get, on, my house. When I can start drinking again, we'll get hammered drunk one night, and we'll do that because Bramble's a good time. They'll smoke you like a fucking brat. I've heard y'all oh, about it. That's fun, dude. Good he's Bramble. fuck up, dude. Bramble's a retard. But I remember Bramble. I called him one day, and this is this is when you changed your name, and uh, you changed your name from your first name to your middle name. And I was like, yo, why is he calling himself Ellard? And Bramble just goes, because Landon didn't work, dummy. Like, and I'm just like, what the fuck? I mean, he's not lying, you know? I mean, folks, if you can take anything from me, sometimes you're not always going forward. Sometimes you got to move laterally. You got to yeah. pivot. You gotta up pivot. that field. But look, don't ever pivot before you go up um, on Kill Tony, all right? Cool. No, just bomb. <laughs> bomb, <laughs> Just go <laughs> insult the uh, insult the host, <laughs> insult host. everybody. Yeah, just go call the guy. Tell him he's got the most thinning. He's a LeBron James of comedy. His hair's thinning. Like, all right, there we go again. Same jokes dude, every single fucking time. But yeah, let's keep going. All right, that was the podcast. All right, tough crowd. Reddit. <laughs> no, uh, hey man, thank you, Lane. Thanks for being here, Ellis. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, it was a good time, man. Good yeah, man. Yeah, good it's smokes. Good I look forward to boxing and shit with you more, dude. It's a good time. Yeah, definitely, yeah I gotta come dude. back. Ellie. Yeah, man. Get that get that ticker right. Maybe yeah, stop drinking 300 fucking milligram caffeine. All right, dude, take it easy, man. Look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show up 20 <laughs> minutes late time. like I always do and skip conditioning. And somebody wrap that. my hands. <laughs> 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 hey, man, can somebody wrap my hands? <laughs> hey, man, it's been hey, can, can Gary finish with you saying what you saying? No, I was just going to say, because I used to be late all the time. I, I was just late on purpose, so I didn't have to do conditioning and... and Coach Andy started figuring it out, and he was like, "Listen, motherfucker, if you show up, you're doing, you you're doing burpees the entire time." <laughs> so Dude. that's why I stopped going. By the way, it wasn't because I had a heart attack. Okay, all right, cool. Story. Shout out <laughs> to the planet. No one cares. Way to take us out, Gary. Nice outro. Hey, it's been another episode of uh, the what? Uncle Lazer and Friends, the Uncle, the Drunk Uncle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> Dude, now it's the Austin Sober Uncle. Yeah, now I'm, now I'm Aunt Laser. <laughs> uh, Drive a Subaru. Thanks for coming to my sober ass <laughs> aunt's podcast. <laughs> nah, I'm drunk uncle. Still, I'm still gonna drink at some point in time. Just not around copious amounts of fucking <laughs> Colombian Twin Peaks. powder. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to Twin Peaks. Shout out Twin Peaks. I haven't sponsored yet, but we do love your wings. We'll go out there. Um, yeah, hey, uh, uh, link in, subscribe, do all that cool shit. 
We'll have the media deck done after before this one airs, so we'll have uh, some sponsorship uh, stuff available. I have some people on my DMs about it, but I'll make a post. If you're interested, we'll work a number out. We'll have numbers for you, metrics, uh, thanks to my Ooh. my lady companion, Carrie Faust, and uh, <laughs> uh, Bobby Jean Flacco, and the late, great uh, Ellis Buller. Thank you all for having us. Get your cat spayed and neutered.